Hi there, I'm Scott Lowe with Asheville Tech Media, and thank you for joining us for this Spotlight Series segment. I'm joined today by Steve Salinas, who is the Head of Product Marketing for Deep Instinct. Steve, thanks for being here today. Thanks, Scott. Nice to meet you. So can you tell us kind of at a high level, what does Deep Instinct do? What's the problem that it's solving for people? Sure. So Deep Instinct is a unique type of cybersecurity company where we're using deep learning to identify threats as early as possible so that we can prevent them. So, so really our approach is what we call a prevention first approach. And our solution is designed to run on endpoints and laptops and servers, servers and mobile devices. And the big difference, the big the, the thing that makes us unique is our application of deep learning to identify and prevent threats from impacting an organization. So I want to get into the deep learning piece in just a minute, but I want to understand the deployment methodology first. It's, it's deployed across the organization on essentially all devices, mobile, desktop, laptop, whatever. Is, is it an agent? So okay. It is an agent. It's an agent-based solution. So it is an important uh, thing when people start to think about deep learning and artificial intelligence. If they know anything about it at all, they're going to immediately kind of zone in on, well, my endpoint, there's no way that my endpoint would be able to train a deep learning model. And they're absolutely correct. We deploy right. a fully trained model that is compressed so that it can run on all those different assets you mentioned. Uh, and it's, it's making that decision locally on each of those endpoints to identify those threats in, in real time. And how is it making decisions? Is it a, is it a fingerprint based thing for certain for certain activities, or is it a, a, is it looking at how uh, the network is reacting to something that's going on? Um, how is it identifying potential threats? Great question. So we have a multi layered approach. So the way where we're applying deep learning is in, in what we call a lot of organizations will call it pre execution, but we call it actually zero time. So essentially, when a file is moved to an asset, let's just Let's just call it an endpoint for, for simplicity's sakes. If someone downloads a file or moves it from a USB drive, at the moment that the file hits the disk, our deep learning model analyzes it, and it takes less than 20 minutes, milliseconds. It runs it through the model, and it predicts and, and makes a decision. It renders a verdict, I should say, if that file is going to be as malicious or benign. It's not using signatures. It's not using any sort of cloud lookup. It's actually, okay. based on the way that we train the model, it's able to make that decision extremely fast. And how are model updates deployed? I assume that as you learn more about my organization and other customer organizations, you're continuously adding to your model's training. Is that correct? So yeah, that's a really interesting point and that comes up quite a bit. And, and the easiest way for me to explain that is we train on a universe of threats and it's millions and millions of threats. So to train a model, a machine learning model, which is deep learning is an advanced form of machine learning. It's kind of the next generation of that. You take right. millions and millions of files, threats. So you have these known bad uh, files and the known good files. And with this humongous data set, this library training data, it's able to make that verdict. So we actually don't need to know anything specifically about your organization or any organization at all. It's really about the, the amount of threats that we've trained the model on that gives it the, the ability to identify threats. But we do apply updates. We do make updates available about twice a year. Okay. And as a user, when am I alerted to this potential threat? When I copy the file to my machine or is it when I try to do something with that file? Yeah, so so there, there we do have kind of a multi-stage approach. So the first attempt, the first chance that we're gonna get at identifying the threat is when that file is copied to the disk. So let's say, for example, we, we, I, we scan the file, and for whatever reason, this file, we don't identify it as being malicious. So it, it gets past that static analysis phase. So then the user goes to interact with the file. Then we move into our behavior analysis. So that's when we're looking at actual, we have built-in ability to identify behaviors that are indicative of ransomware, for example. Uh, so that we can identify if a file is looking like it's trying to encrypt your data, and then we can step in and block it and prevent it from, from doing that. So there are really two phases. It's that static analysis where we're using the deep learning, and then we have built-in behavior analysis capabilities to identify other threats. But the majority of threats, I'll tell you, are identified by that static analysis phase. Okay. And so that gives me an opportunity to basically, as a user, take steps to not do something with that file. 
But if I insist or I just ignore the warnings, then you're proactively stepping in later on when I try to open that file and do something with it to block um, network communications or whatever that are taking place so that I don't end up succumbing to ransomware at some point. Correct. So it is really up to the organization. So the majority of our, of our customers, once they feel comfortable with the solution, they actually run it in automated remediation mode. So when we identify okay. something as, as a threat, whether it be with static analysis or behavioral analysis, we prevent it right away. You certainly could have it in detection mode only to where the user could still interact with the files. But over time, organizations see, you know, that's not really the way to, to stay ahead of the threats. So they, they do end up usually going to the automated remediation mode so obviously ransomware is a big use case but i assume that you also take the place do you also take the place of things like virus protection and things like that or do i still need something separate to handle some of those things right so we we do typically run in two different modes or we see customers that that want to do one of two things they either want to completely replace their existing antivirus which we can certainly do that or they have like a an import protection platform that they're tired of we have definitely replaced those so very you know, popular vendors out there in the marketplace. But we also do have scenarios where they want us to run side by side. So they might be using some sort of large security vendor for other things, for like encryption or personal firewalls, but they want to use us for that antivirus portion. So that's what that's what we, we step in and take the place of. So it's very, very flexible in that way. So obviously it's clear how things kind of work interactively on the um, user-centric endpoint. But when we start talking about server workloads, administrators aren't sitting on the desktop 24 seven. How are you alerting them when people are saving files out on the network um, or or maybe even in the cloud? I'll tell you, maybe we get to that in a minute, but um, that there, there's a potential file with a threat that's sitting on a file server somewhere that anybody could access. So the, that's what's really great about our solution is like if you want to, and we have a lot of organizations that obviously deploy some servers, it's sitting there quiet. The, the agent sits there on the server and it's not doing anything until the files move around. So obviously servers have a lot of chatter. So there's going to be a lot of analysis that happens on those, those servers. But as we identify mm -hmm. threats, again, it's up to the, it's up to the um, security team and how the, their approach. Do they want us to prevent the files immediately or just alert into our dashboard? So we do have a dashboard where the analysts can run. And all the data that, that does get feed, fed into the, our dashboard is accessible via API as well. So if they want to feed that into some other product, like a, a SOAR or something like that, they can certainly do that as well. So, but that's the whole point of, of the ability for us to make those autonomous decisions to take some of the load off of the security analysts themselves. So one of the things that's really interesting that you mentioned before was the behavioral detection. What kind of behavior um, I mean, obviously, you know, something kicking off a, a, a number of network connections and things like that would be, I would assume, one. But um, what are some of the behaviors that your tool identifies as threats that should be considered as part of a, an overall mitigation strategy? So one of the cool things that we have, and it's, it's fairly unique, I think it might actually be, we might be the only one that has it right now, is we have this contextual script analysis. So this is one where it's actually a combination of like the the static analysis, but also into the behaviors or what the intended behaviors are. So we just released this feature where if someone tries to kick off a script, an attacker, let's say, or uh, there are two scenarios, attacker is trying to kick off a script, we actually can uh, analyze that script and the calls that are in there to identify if any of them are malicious. Uh, and if they're not, you know, they can run, because obviously people do scripts all the time. But that gives us that ability to really dive into the context of the script. A lot of the solutions that are in the marketplace today they view scripts as either you can run them or not, which is right. very limiting for organizations. Mm -hmm. So this ability gives us kind of a, an advanced approach to those scripts. But to your answer your question specifically about behaviors, so ransomware, one of the things that it tries to do, obviously, is to delete shit, delete volume shadow copies, right? So if we didn't see any sort of activities that, or we see any sort of encryption that starts going, that is indicative, obviously, of ransomware, and we have the ability to step in and prevent it from running at that point. But again, again, that's just one example of what we can do. And uh, it sounds like you support all the common endpoints, Windows, Mac, iOS, Android servers, uh, Linux? So Linux is, is coming out shortly. That is, we, we do support everything else you mentioned there. And we do have a solution that will be available for Linux, Linux very soon. And if people want to learn more about, um, about what you do and potentially how to buy, what can they do? 
So the best thing to do is to go to deepinstinct.com. I find it to be a really great resource if you're interested in just learning about deep learning. We have tons of, of good resources there. And then you can look at some of the videos and some of the things about how our solution specifically works and reach out to us. We, we hold regular webinars and we'd be more than happy to talk to you about how we might be able to help improve your overall security posture. I will say I actually did visit your site and watch your videos. So I actually had a clue about what I was talking about um, <laughs> before we, we got on our chat today. There, it's really good stuff you have on your website. I appreciate that. Um, Steve, thank you very much for joining us. And um, thank you to our audience for watching this Spotlight Series segment.